Okay, the next step is you're going to look at where all of these four lines intersect in the corners. Do you see that there's a little triangle? And I want you to take your scissors. Mine are really good and sharp now because I just used my Fiskars scissor sharpening tool on them. And what you want to do is just snip right here the top one to where it stops right there. And then turn it around and do the exact same thing right here. You see the line right there? Okay. And snip it there, the very top one, until they intersect. And go around and do that on all four corners. Okay. Now that you've snipped off all the little triangles in the corners, um, first make sure you know which direction you're going to put this card together. So take a little A2 card if you're not sure just by eyeballing it and take a look and see and then you'll understand what, which ones of these are the sides and which one is the top. Alright. Now the other little trick that makes it look a little nicer, maybe a little more polished, is to take the one that you're going to use for the top itself and, let me see if I can adjust this camera a little better. There we go. And just try to take your scissors and just gently round this corner as you come around. Okay? And then do the same exact thing on the other side so that you have two matching corners. And I'm going to try to do this at this weird angle that I'm sitting at. Which it's not conducive, but, you know, that's how it goes. There you go. Okay, I hope you all could see that. And it just makes the card a little bit nicer and looks a little better than all those square edges. And if you don't like the way you did it, like I don't really like that first one completely, I'm going to fix it and just make it a little more round. There you go. All right. So now we have scored. We have scored again. So we have eight score lines. We have rock and roll to make the card keep its depth, especially with heavy cardstock. I think that's important to do. And now we print and we are ready. Now one more thing you can do is you can get rid of this piece here if you choose. Sometimes I just give it a little, uh, I do a little cheating thing so I know where it is and where I want to fold. Or you could actually just put it on the board and just score it. But for right now, I'm just in a hurry, so I'm not going to put it on the board. But you should, because it'll look better. All right? You can tuck it under, and, or you could just cut it off. And either way would work. All right? So take some adhesive. And because I'm sitting at such a weird angle to all this, I don't think I can maneuver my big ATG gun. So for this, I'm just going to use just a little tape runner. Okay, though? And... Because I am a messy grafter, as I've also admitted to all of you, I usually try to, anytime I'm doing anything with glue, use a craft sheet. I have three of them in different sizes. Now, let me tell you one other thing. If you're going to send a card like this through the mail, and if it's a very, very heavy card, I would definitely use red liner tape for this. And I, I hope you guys know what that is. If you don't, let me know. But this tape, it is a double-sided tape. That, it has a red liner, which is why they call it that. This stuff is pretty much indestructible. When you tape it, it is there and nothing is coming apart. But for this demonstration, I am just going to use my little tape runner. Okay? So just put enough on the outside edge, on the corners, and see? See why I did that? See why I use my craft sheet? Because I always make a mess. All right, so there's that one. And then I'm going to match it up right here. Okay, let's see, I made a mess again. Voila, thank goodness for the craft sheet that you can just brush off any glue. Okay, ready? Here we go. Here's the big finish, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you've rock and rolled, and when you rock and roll, then these are going to sit together correctly with the correct depth. See what I mean? Okay, give it a little push. Like I said, if you're using, uh, sending it to the mail, or if it's a really, really heavy card, or both, I would definitely use red liner tape. All right, now, we have that done. 
And here is an AP card. And that was pretty cute with this, actually. These weren't meant to go together, but voila, they sure do. So, you see there's lots of layers on here. Not as many as usually, actually, for me, but there's cardstock as a base. Then there's pretty thick pattern paper that's also embossed on top. And then there's chipboard. And there's ribbon with another knot in it. And, of course, flowers. So let me show you how easily, I mean, this one's easy because it's not that big. A lot of mine are much bigger than this. Look at how much room is in there. Whoa, I could put a whole bunch more stuff in here, see? That is the magic of it. Love the Envella box. And then when you close it, you see how those corners are nice and rounded. You can just put some tape right down here. And the other thing you can do is make a liner. And that is something that is also shown in the directions and in the wonderful DVD that comes with your Ultimate Crafters Companion. Just one more finishing touch that I actually forgot to tell you all about is on the board, right here you'll notice there are different smaller elements here, and they have these ridges. And what these are for, these are four different elements that are actually made to make it really simple for you to be able to emboss on the lip of your envelope. All you do is put whichever design you want, put it in there, and again, depending on how you want the embossing to show, I want mine to show on the other side, so that is why I'm putting it on this side, which is the inside. All right, find your little mark, and there's one, and then there's two. And when you're not used to blind embossing, sometimes it's a little tough to just think about it and figure out where it's at. So just let it, let your tool find its mark. That's the best thing that I can tell you. Let the tool do the job that it was designed for. And then just relax and let it find the lines. And it will. It will find the lines and... You'll have a beautifully embossed little notion on the outside lid of your envelope. See? There you go. And if you wanted to, you could sand that. I could use one of my handy-dandy little sanding tools that I keep getting from my nail salon that I showed you. And that would make that stand out a lot better. See? There you go. Oh, I love that with the white core paper. Can you see that? Oh, I can't see it because my camera's in the wrong place. There you go. So I just took one of these handy-dandy little nail things, which are the new ones I'm getting all the time, and because it's got white core, just took it and embossed it, and then voila.